applied as someone who's gotten on base as of late for Texas Tech. We'll see how they can handle Morgan. 75 degrees at first pitch. Cloudy skies, and that first pitch from Morgan misses for ball one to Herzog. Second on the team in hitting at 367 on the season. First in hits with 61. Fouled off, it's one and one. Morgan got the start on Sunday for Texas against Baylor. Went four and two thirds, gave up three hits, didn't give up a run, struck out one. Getting the start here in game one of the Big 12 softball championship for the Longhorns. That's a strike at the knees and it's one and two. And that's the spot she's going to have to locate right there at the lee knees, the low part of the strike zone. This Texas Tech team can really swing a good bat, especially down in the zone. So her ability to have the late movement dropping off the table right at the last minute going to be key for her along with that off-speed pitch as we saw that one just barely miss outside of the zone for ball two. Morgan, a second team all Big 12 selection. Ready to bring the 2-2. This is heading out to the gap in left center field. It'll get down and all the way to the fence. Herzog in the second with a leadoff double for Texas Tech. It's a really good swing to start off this ball game for Texas Tech. Knowing that Mac Morgan likes to work down in the zone, look at how low in her legs Mackenzie Herzog is even before she starts her swing. She's setting herself up to be able to hit those pitches low in the zone. Gets one, gets her barrel underneath it, and drives it out into that left center gap for a leadoff double. Good start for Texas Tech. 15th double of the season for Herzog, and here is Ellie Bailey. Bailey takes... Ball one, quite the story. The senior from White Wright, Texas. First team all-conference selection in the Big 12. Made a huge jump this season at the plate. This one's blooped foul and out of play, and it's one one yeah, it's been a huge jump in those home run numbers. Three home runs last season, already 16 on the year so far for Ellie Bailey. And see back to 2021, two home runs. So five home runs combined in her previous two seasons and 16 in this season alone. Team leader in that category for a team that hits a lot of home runs. 73 on the season, second to Oklahoma in the Big 12. That's inside, it's two and one. It was a tight series in the regular season, end of March between Texas and Texas Tech. Two one-run games, both wins for Texas, game one and game two. Bailey fouls that one off. Bailey had a three-run home run in game two of that series, but it was a 4-3 Texas win. A little bit more comfortable. But more of that power here in the Big 12 tournament. One of her 16 home runs on the season. 2-2 for Morgan. This one is lifted to center field. Herzog off the bag a couple of steps. Put away by Bella Dayton for the first out of the first. Still really early in this ball game, but you can already see that the game plan for Texas Tech is to try to get underneath the drop ball, try to drive the ball up into the air, out into the grass. Talking to Coach Snyder before this week, he said that's what they try to do. They want to do the opposite of what the pitcher wants them to do. A drop ball pitcher wants you to hit a ton of ground balls, so they're going to go up to the plate trying to drive that ball to the outfield. If you're a rise ball pitcher, instead of just having a ton of fly ball outs, they're trying to hit the ball down into the ground. Those over-exaggerated adjustments is something that he focuses on when it comes to the hitting for Texas Tech. Reese Atwood asked for time to go talk to her pitcher, Morgan, as you take a look at Craig Snyder in his first year as a Texas Tech head coach with the Via at the plates, the junior center fielder from San Antonio at 326 on the season. Yeah. 
There's a strike and it's one and one. Twenty one years as an assistant coach before taking over at Texas Tech for his first head coaching position. He's got some ties to Oklahoma, the Oklahoma program. Two and one. He's on the coaching staff over at Florida State, most recently at Texas A&M. Really enjoyed talking hitting with him on our call this week. And a graduate assistant under Patty Gasso at Oklahoma. 11. For the record, I have never encountered someone you did not enjoy this talking is, hitting. This is very true. And yeah. this is, you know, Craig was great and you loved it, but <laughs> just full disclosure here, you know, you're talking hitting with anybody, including pitchers. You, you love that conversation. It's <laughs> true. The pitchers might not as much, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> you have to read the room better sometimes. There's a walk to Via and two are aboard with one down here in the first. Well, and I think when you look at Texas Tech and their offense, there's a lot of players that have had some pretty big jumps in their offensive production this season. And he said not a lot of it is really mechanical changes, but more changes in their approach and how they go up there hunting a certain speed or a certain location. And just having that distinct game plan has helped out a lot of these batters this season. Alana Barraza batting cleanup. Fouls it off for strike one. She's hitting above 300 as a team. Texas Tech at 308. Good for fourth in the Big 12. We talked about the home run numbers. Two on, one out here in the first. One and one. See how they line up defensively. Scott at third base, Dayton in center field for Texas. Quiroga, good. Martinez also on the infield with Atwood catching Morgan. Papelka and Maloney, the corner outfielders. One one. Barraza, a senior from Diamond Bar, California. Played in 20 games a season ago, hit 243. Fixture in the lineup this year. This one is a blooper back behind short. Martinez without number two. Two down for Morgan, and now bring up the number five hitter, Peyton Blight. Number 23, Peyton Blight. Third on the team and hitting at 357 on the season. She's got good pop as well with the nine home runs. Ball one. Two and zero. Oh. Herzog with a leadoff double. Morgan got Bailey to fly out to center, then walked via before Barraza popped out, and now falling behind. Two and zero oh is Morgan, and swinging at the two zero oh is Blythe that fouls it off. I like that aggressive swing in that hitter's count. 2-0 count. You know that Mac Morgan, especially after the circle visit from Mike White, she's going to try to attack the strike zone, bring something over the heart of the plate. She does exactly that. And a good cut by Blythe just fouled straight back for strike number one. This one is a base hit. It gets down and all the way to the fence. This could score two. One run is in. A second run is around. No throw. And Texas Tech jumps out to a 2-0 lead. A two-out double by Peyton Bly puts the Red Raiders in front. 
after the big cut and the foul ball on the 2-0 count. Mac Morgan goes with an off-speed pitch, 60 miles per hour down in the zone. And look at how perfectly on time Peyton Blythe is with this swing, driving it well out into that right center gap to bring two runs across for Texas Tech in the top of the first inning. 32 runs batted in now for the senior, her 10th double of the year. Ball one to the Big 12 freshman of the year, Kaylee Wyckoff. Wyckoff in the six hole in the starting lineup for Texas Tech here today. Their leading hitter at 401 on the season. 101. I think for her, maybe moving her down just a little bit more, get some more pitches to hit in the bottom of the order. She's still hitting well, maybe not hitting quite as well as we've seen her do throughout the rest of the season. So Coach Snyder decided to move her down a few spots. We've seen her batting up in that two hole quite a lot throughout this season. Sliced to third and gloved by Mia Scott to retire the side. Texas Tech breaks through with two in the first. And Scott made sure that was it in the inning. Hard hit line drive off of the Big 12 freshman of the year's bat, but Mia Scott scoops it up, no problem. Which is that she uses to get quite a few fly ball outs behind her. Starts off with strike one to Lee and Good in the leadoff spot for Texas. Second team all-conference selection and an all-freshman team selection. You'll hear that phrase, all-freshman team selection, a few <laughs> times as we go along here this afternoon for the Longhorns. Well, majority of the all-freshman team in the Big 12 was the Texas starting lineup, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> that good as you take a look at the rest of the lineup. Scott, Dayton, Atwood, one through four in the lineup. And Ashton Maloney, all-Big 12 freshman team. <laughs> Fly ball right side of the infield. Barraza calling for it and puts it away for out number one. When you look back to that Texas, Texas Tech series that actually opened up Big 12 conference play this season, getting runs was not the issue for Texas Tech. They actually had the lead in two of those three games that it was just a matter of holding the lead, keeping down this Texas offense at the time. Scott tries to bunt her way on, and fielding the position is Hoover, and Texas Tech thinks they have out number two, but the call is safe at first base, and Live. let's see if we're going to have a challenge Live. here. I don't know about you, Eric, but I thought she was out. Let's take another look at it here. Oh, safe, yeah, you're right. She hit the back of the bag, too, which sometimes can throw you off a little bit. I took a peek down in the dugout. I think it's Craig Snyder down at the end of the dugout, and He's very close to first base, and he signaled to his team safe, so he's not going to challenge it. And I think that's yeah, the right I call, think it is the right call. by the head yep. coach. And the right call by the first base umpire in this game, Dustin Douglas. So Scott's aboard with a bunt single, and here is Bella Dayton. Oh and two. Dayton's been battling back, fighting back from injury this year. We remember how good she was here in this ballpark last year. Remember the all women's college world series team, three extra base hits, hit 350 for the Longhorns. So some good vibes in this park for her. Some clutch hits, too, mm -hmm. thinking back to that World Series. But you mentioned she's just battling some injuries, but still has been able to put up phenomenal numbers this season for the Longhorns. Batting 342 coming into this tournament. Take a look how things are set up defensively for Texas Tech. They've been pretty good in the field this year. 52 errors, third fewest in the Big 12. They've turned 15 double plays. That one's hacked foul.
Hoover ready with another one, too. That's going to be out of play. Hoover from Edgewood, Texas, pitched at Northwestern State, where she picked up 11 wins. Had an ERA of two and a half, had 175 strikeouts. That's up for a ball, it's two and two. Overall, the Texas Tech staff last in the Big 12 and earned run average at four, last in opponents batting average 271. They've given up second most home runs. I'm sure the pitchers will be the first to tell you, do you know how the wind blows at our home park? <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. When you watch those games, that wind is blowing out there. Definitely a hitter's friendly park, and especially if you're a pitcher that throws the ball up in the zone, you know that if you miss just even a little bit, those hitters are going to get it up into that wind tunnel and send it on out of the park. Good battle here between Hoover and Dayton. Ninth pitch of the at-bat. We'll need at least a tenth. Some good swings from Dayton. A lot of foul balls. You can see that Sage Hoover is even mixing speeds just a little bit. Bella Dayton out in front just a tad on that swing. Pitch number 10 from Sage Hoover. That's out of play. Texas, as a team, second in the Big 12 and hitting 329, tied for third in home runs, 46 in the regular season for Mike White. They ended the regular season getting swept by Baylor, run ruled in game one in Austin, then lost 5-2 and 2-1 in Waco. They were up 1-0 in the seventh in that third and final game. Two runs ended up scoring on an error that Gave Baylor the sweep. Bella Dayton continues to work and makes Sage Hoover work in the circle. Well, that's what you want from your batters in the first inning is to see as many pitches as possible from the starter, gather information, pass it along to your teammates. Make sure that you're a difficult out for Hoover. Good take on a rise ball up and out. I like how she's climbing the ladder, knowing that Dayton's been very aggressive in this at bat. Not easy to take those pitches up in the zone. Dayton was down in the count 0-2. She's worked it full. And she earns a walk on a 13-pitch at bat. Just what a battle by Bella Dayton. Foul ball after foul ball after foul ball, trying to get her timing on, taking a couple of close pitches that are just missing outside of the zone. Trying to extend this inning, and now you feel, if you're Reese Atwood, you've got a lot of information to play with going into your first at-bat of the ball game. Takes ball one. Atwood's second team all-conference and on the all-freshman team at the Big 12 after a standout season. that saw her hit 11 home runs overall in the regular season and drive in 39. One thing that Atwood had a knack for this season, was that home run, that two-run home run, came in the sixth inning and put Texas in front, so it does not qualify as a walk-off. She was just getting warmed up. Though. She was just getting yeah. warmed up. <laughs> sixth inning, sixth inning two-run homers is training wheels before the walk-off stuff for the freshman catcher. Our plate umpire, Kaylee Young, had to restock the softball supply because the Dayton at-bat, now the Atwood at-bat, has <laughs> featured a bunch of 
foul balls in the stands here in OKC. Atwood sends one to the left fielder. That's Blythe under it. Drifting back to the track. Ball carried pretty well. We saw as the game went along between Iowa State and Baylor, wasn't carrying much it seemed early, but we saw a couple fly balls that just kept drifting back and back. Not a lot of wind right now, but the temperature is coming up a little bit as we've gone along. Well, and Iowa State found a lot of their success by driving balls on the ground through the infield, dropping them out into the grass. But Michaela Ramos got a hold of one and sent she it did. out of the yard. For the first home run of the 2023 championship. Strike one to Viviana Martinez, freshman shortstop. Do you want to handle this one? Freshman. Oh, for the, fr for the freshman shortstop, yep. you're throwing it my way? I appreciate it. No, no, no. I mean, just the, our line, member of the all-freshman team. Freshman team, team yes. <laughs> I don't want to hog it all. I feel like we're going to have to <laughs> say that several times throughout this ball game and throughout the rest of this tournament. Well, you talked right, about it right at the top of the telecast. It, Texas had some great success with some young players last year, and they're even younger this year, and they've kept the good times going in Austin with 40 wins. Coming in in the top. It's really interesting, too, how they lead the team in several different categories. You've got one that's leading in home runs, one that's leading in RBI. Sitlali Gutierrez doing a great job in the circle for Texas so far this season. Just so many young players that just do not act like freshmen when they're out there on the field. That misses, it's two and two. Talked to Mike White before this tournament started. He thought that Martinez was chasing things a little bit right now. Still hitting above 350 but trying to find that swing. And this one's gonna find foul ground and tracked down by Blythe in foul territory to retire the side. We've played one in game number two here in OKC. And it was Paige uh, Mindendahl that was the creator of Dwayne The Rock, found it in El Paso, Texas, I believe, is it was, what Coach it was Snyder in El told Paso. us. Paso, she didn't create, you know, Dwayne was always there. She, Dwayne just needed to be discovered because Dwayne had been there for thousands and thousands of years. So Paige is the one who discovered Dwayne the Rock. Now Paige is her is Dwayne's handler this year, but that's being passed down that to already Alana Barraza, yes. correct? Yes, the chain of handling for Dwayne the Rock has already been established for next year. It's not a one-off this year. So here's, here's the impact of this Rock, which was adopted February 18th. I mean, in Dw tournament time. This is, that, that's just her tournament results. Dwayne's got a pretty good record. I mean, they got to find a way during the off season. There's Dwayne hanging out. <laughs> they got to they got to find ways to incorporate Dwayne and in, you know they could hire him out for parties, get-togethers, weddings for good luck. I mean, this is something. This could be. We talk about in this new age of revenue in college athletics. I think Paige and Alana could team up and maybe <laughs> cash in on. Dwayne's good luck. That's out of play. Well, this team definitely likes to have fun. Yes. They're playing their best when they are out there having fun. I think that fan's having a little bit of fun with a nice catch out in foul territory. But Coach Snyder wants them to have the all-in mentality Be all in, in every if, single thing he, that they do. He gave them assignment, go find tumbleweeds, and they were all in finding the biggest tumbleweeds they could and bring it back for a competition. He wants everything to be all in. Fun. Practice, games, be locked in, be all in. Popped up on the infield, and Kennedy Kreitz is retired for the first out of the second inning. And sometimes you're all in on the softball field. Sometimes you're all in on Dwayne the Rock. Or the tumbleweeds. <laughs> or <laughs> painting <laughs> coffee <laughs> mugs. Oh, no, no, no. This, this is how you know you've made it. When you get your own graphic from our production crew. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see you know, people will congregate, hang around Dwayne, because when things go well for Texas Tech, you know, Dwayne will get the credit. At strike one to Abby Oreck, the junior shortstop, with one down here in the second. Well, it's interesting when you think of Craig Snyder taking over as a head coach, and he said he had opportunities to be a head coach before, 
but he was always happy to be the assistant, a hitting coach, sitting, flipping balls in a cage. You know, how many dads and coaches and moms who coach their kids love just, you know, I'm going to stay here all day. I just love working with the kids. And eventually the Texas Tech offer was too good to turn down. It was a great fit for him. He did say it's like drinking from a fire hose when you go from <laughs> being the assistant coach saying, go talk to head coach, you know. They'll answer your question. Now everything ends with you. The buck stops with you. Morgan gets a strikeout two down. And I think there are a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that we don't see on a day-to-day -day basis that these head coaches are doing. The coach Snyder still loves to be in the cages with his team, working on the hitting, talking, hitting, indulging me in a hitting conversation <laughs> <laughs> on our calls before this week. Number nine hitter Riley Love facing Morgan. Fouls it off for strike one. Found out he got the job Snyder did last year on Father's Day. He's a dad, so that was a kind of a cool moment. He did say that it was supposed to be, what, 106 his first visit in Lubbock? <laughs> but it was a dry heat. He told us it was a dry heat, he, so it was he, fine. He had convinced himself of the dry heat argument really quickly. <laughs> so <laughs> it is not a dry heat here in Oklahoma City today. And they battled. They may have gotten shut out in the Oklahoma series, but they didn't get run ruled. And he said he was receiving congratulatory texts from his friends. Hey, you didn't get run ruled by Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> That's an accomplishment. That is a fair ball down the right field line. Good hustle to get over there by Maloney to hold the number nine hitter Love to a two out single. You can see that Mac Morgan's made an adjustment attack in the strike zone in this inning gets Riley Love to an 0-2 count, throws another drop ball, and she just sees this ball in way deep, driving it straight down that first baseline out into right field for a base hit in the ninth spot and turns this lineup over. Back to the top of the lineup, and here's Herzog, who doubled and scored in the first. That one is sliced foul. Herzog had great success at Texas A&M where Snyder was the assistant coach before taking over at Texas Tech. He said he first started recruiting McKenzie when she was, what, 12th grade? When he was an assistant at Florida State? That's how long he's known McKenzie and her family. So it seemed like a natural fit when she entered the portal after last season to end up with him at Texas Tech. two-way player for them, and we've seen her already in this ball game with the double to start it off. She's also thrown some good innings in the circle for them as well. 90 appearances the last three years for A&M, 24 home runs in those three years at the plate, so it's a pretty good pop for Herzog. Down in the count here, one and two. Herzog's had an impact, obviously, on Texas Tech. She is the only one to appear in all 53 games this year for the Red Raiders, and she has started every game. That's chop two seconds in the outfield grass. It's good on the first to retire the side. We've played one and a half here in Oklahoma City, Texas Tech for the 2-0 league. To see how quickly Texas can make these adjustments up the plate with a new pitcher into this ball game. Keel making her 11th appearance of the season. She started April 15th against Baylor, and that was her last appearance. Gave up a couple of hits and four runs in that game including a home run. 
Off speed misses, it's 2-0. It was game one of that Oklahoma series where every three outs there was a pitching change. And coach said that was an intentional strategy that they had going into that game. Just try something different. Oklahoma's only loss this year has been to Baylor back February 19th. And so he went in there trying to change things up a bit. Pitching coach Paige Cassidy over in the dugout handling all eight of the pitchers on this Texas Tech staff. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot to keep track of. Kendall Fritz is the staff leader in appearances with 31 and innings pitched, tied for the team lead, entering today with Hoover with 101. You mentioned Mackenzie Herzog. We could see her here today. And it's a leadoff walk to Simmons to start things here in the second. Something tells me there's going to be plenty of activity in that Texas Tech bullpen. It was nothing that Craig Snyder told us, but when we were talking about that Oklahoma game, you wonder when you have a must-win situation against a team that's in the top ten in the national rankings of the number two seed in this tournament, maybe you go with that, let's give them a different look every inning option. All hands on deck mentality, literally. Got Olivia Reigns and Erna Carlin getting loose over in that Texas Tech bullpen. It's, ha it's hard for a hitter, too, to adjust to a different look every single time because you try to use some of the information from your previous at-bat to help you in your next at-bat, and you've got to come in there with a fresh game plan every time you see a new pitcher out there. Line shot past the second baseman. They'll get down and all the way to the wall. Kiroga to second. Rounding third is Simmons. She'll score, and Texas is on the board here in the second. Love the quick adjustment by Vanessa Kiroga, knowing that she's going to try to throw a lot of off-speed pitches. That's what Keel's go-to is out there, and she throws this one 57 miles per hour on the outside part of the plate, and Kiroga just gets her hands out in front, driving it out into that right center gap to cut the lead in half, score the first run of the ball game for the Longhorns. Here's Ashton Maloney. That gets past the catcher. A wild pitch will allow Kiroga to take third easily. Maddie Keel just having a hard time con consistently locating that strike zone. That leadoff walk to Katie Simmons. And now missing that pitch way low and outside, rolling all the way to the backstop. Mike White coming to chat with the plate umpire. We'll have a pinch runner as Kiroga will exit. Luke Gilbert will run. Maloney at 389 in the season was very good in Big 12 play at 372. To shortstop, Gilbert holds at third. They get the out at first. One down. Nice. Oric with a good strong throw. One yep. away. Nice play. Kind of a slow developing play. A lot of speed from Ashton Maloney up at the plate, too. And she didn't have a ton of time to look the runner back at third base. So yeah, she was off just a little bit. Just a quick look with her momentum still moving towards first base is what allows her to get that first out. Here's Papelka. Junior from Austin at 389 on the season. Infield pulls in to defend the number nine hitter. Who's trying to bunt her way on, but fouls it up on the screen. Kind 
of had a feeling that we might see Elizabeth Elka in this starting lineup today. Somebody who's hit the ball really well her past couple of games. Four hits in her last nine plate appearances. Twenty-one hits on the season. Six of those twenty-one have come with runners in scoring position. Hitting 429 with runners in scoring position and a chance here with Gilbert at third. Count now one and two. That misses for a ball, it's two and two. This tournament featuring four NCAA tournament locks, three others who need to run the table. It would appear Texas Tech, it's interesting because if they get a win or two, now they're high in the RPI, 63, but Craig Snyder thought, well, our record's pretty good, 31 and 21. This one's tapped at third, Gilbert breaking for the plate, and Texas Tech defense comes through for the out. Looked like Lou Gilbert was taken off on contact. Off of Papelka's bat, goes straight to Riley Love over at third base. And look at how she doesn't even move her feet to throw that ball to home because she knows she doesn't have the time. Perfect throw and a great tag by Kennedy Kreitz to cut down that run from scoring at home. Love to Kreitz for the outs in support of Keel. Back to the top of the order, and here's Leanne Good. Good popped out to second in the first. That one skipped up. There goes the runner that throws a good one, but beating the throw is Papelka. She's in safely. Good jump by Alyssa Papelka on this ball down into the dirt. Nice throw by Kennedy Kreitz back there, right on the money, but it looks like Papelka just slides in safely underneath that tag for her ninth stolen base on the season. In on the hands, cut off by Love, who throws wide at first. The throwing air will allow Texas to tie the game at two as Papelka scores. Just as Texas Tech looked like they were going to get out of this inning, holding on to that one-run lead. This is a routine ground ball over to Riley Love at third base, who has plenty of time to set her feet and make a good throw over at first base. And it just sails to the left of Ellie Bailey, who's not able to come up with that catch. And the tying run comes across to score on that air over at third base. Keeps the inning going for Mia Scott, who takes a ball. Scott reached on a bunt single in the first. Two and oh. Mia Scott had a great freshman year last year. Ended up batting 377, and a big reason for that is because of how even her spray is across the field. You can even see it's actually heavy on the opposite side. 45% of her balls put in play are going over to left field, and it's so important for these batters to be able to have equal power to all parts of the field because when the scouting report's out there on you, you know that they're going to try to attack you in a certain part in the strike zone, but Mia Scott just continuing to prove her consistency up at the plate. Improving upon her batting average last, from last season, batting 393 coming in to this Big 12 tournament. Second team, all Big 12 a year ago. First team this year. The 3 1. She's on board for the second time today. Yeah. 
First and second with two down. That last start time as Olivia Rain steps into the circle, the third pitcher used so far by Texas Tech. And she's primarily going to throw the fastball to both sides of the plate as we just saw the first one skipping down into the dirt and out of play up above the backstop. I think that might be a first for me. Typically we see foul balls going up there, but it actually ricocheted off of Kennedy Kreitz back behind the plate and bounced up into the netting. Well, we got a softball collection working on the netting <laughs> behind home play right now. There There's it is. Two. There's two. There's another one down the line. Yeah, she likes to throw those fastballs, but it also has a ton of confidence in that changeup. She will throw them early and she will throw them often. Am I responsible to go down there and get those? It's my first time here, so I, didn't know, I didn't know if there was some sort of look. If it's your first time here at Hall of Fame Stadium, we need you to go get. I yes. mean, I'm thrilled to be here. I mean, I've never had a chance, and I'm. I'm been looking forward to this for weeks and weeks, but if you're going to tell me I've got to go fish those out. You actually have to barrel roll down the netting <laughs> and then get them. Right, so on, not just that. getting them, but barrel have to do roll. it in a Do I have to do style. the uh, like the spinny bat thing for uh, a few turns before I do yes. the barrel roll? Okay. Yes, all what of else? the things. Okay. Well, that wasn't a 13-pitch walk for Dayton. A little bit quicker that time. She's aboard, and the bases are loaded here for Texas in the second with two runs in. You wonder if having to bring Olivia Reigns into this ball game in the bottom of the second inning, if it's almost a little bit of a domino effect with how Coach Craig Snyder wanted to use his pitching staff going up against the Longhorns today. Talked about how he's not afraid to throw a new pitcher out there every half inning but had to bring Reigns into this ball game with two away in the second. Atwood flied out to left in the first. The 0-1 from Reigns. Off speed. Atwood off balance. 1-1. Atwood three hits with the bases loaded and six at bats this season. They're loaded now. Two and one. Reigns making her 21st appearance of the season. Big spot here. Bases loaded in a tie game, but it's early. Two one. Grounded too short. The throw across to first. Ulrich to Bailey to retire the side. Texas puts two on the board in the second. We've played two. It's 2-2. Two -two. Stinning lost it with one out in the sixth. Ended up with the two hitter and the win. Setting up the showdown with Oklahoma tomorrow, 1 o'clock Central Time on ESPNU. Top of the third. Ellie Bailey to lead things off. Bailey flied out to center in the first. Two in the first for Texas Tech, two in the second for Texas to even things up. Winner of this game will take on the winner of our next game between Oklahoma State and Kansas. That one slapped out of play. 0-2 to Bailey. Katie Simmons now in the game at first for Texas for Kiroga. Always love watching the catchers. You can frame the pitches that bounce down to the <laughs> dirt. They always have their pitchers back. You never know. You never know. Fly ball to right field. Maloney in a step for out number one. So this is my first trip here to this stadium. Do you remember your first trip here to the stadium? I do remember my first trip to the stadium, and it was actually prior to my 
collegiate career, I came here a couple of times in travel ball for our national tournaments. Young Maddie <laughs> running around the fields. It was always a treat, though, if you kept winning and you got to the championship games, then you got to play here on this big field. So because that was always the, the fields goal. all around. Yes. And so yes. you're like, oh, you know, what was the name of your travel ball team? Do you remember? The very first team I came here with was the SoCal Crushers. SoCal, Cr SoCal Crushers, you're on field yes. seven. Yes. You know, where are we going next? So we got to eat something, then you're on field three, right? Then, That's how kind of yeah. it worked. Then we were the Choppers when I was in high school. And I actually remember one of the first times playing in front of college coaches who were coming out to recruit. And I got a relay in from the outfield and I went to hold the ball because the runner was already going to be safe and I spiked the ball straight in front of me. Super embarrassed, right? That should never happen. But the coaches actually liked that I had the idea not to just throw the ball into home plate because there was no play there. So because I tried to hold on to the ball, even though I was embarrassed because I spiked the ball right in front of me. So after all these years, there's field two over there where, where young Maddie that. You spiked the ball. Yeah. You, so you've spun the story to the to this point where you actually spiked a softball, and that's a positive. Yes. Yes. At the time, <laughs> you know, I did not feel that way. But because I was trying to think a play ahead. Yes, that's well, the now, positives out of it. I will say this. I did not know young travel ball, Maddie, but something tells me you were an overthinker of plays <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. I like to call it pre-pitch <laughs> thought, Eric. That's what we're going to go with. Yep, so See, there's we, some future, we, yeah, yep. future. There's some young Maddies running around. Running around. Yep. <laughs> my first ever home run I ever hit in my entire softball career was actually here on this field. It was the first time I had ever left the yard. Wow. Yes. I'm not going to tell you how old I was because it took me a long time before I finally <laughs> left well, the yard. But. I, I, I like to think of myself <laughs> as a veteran journalist, so my follow-up question, Maddie, how old were you when you hit that home run? There's a solid single <laughs> through the right side by Via with one down here in the Texas Tech third. Were they in your was it in your college days, <laughs> or before that? It was before. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know it. I, you know, you I thought maybe you were just a credit. singles hitter up until you got <laughs> doubles, <laughs> doubles. Hey, and now look at her, first home run that way, and now here she is in the spot where she's belonged all the time. I, I feel bad. I did not know your first career home run was in this building. I forgot about it until just this moment. No, so, you did yes. no such thing. You were trying to be modest about it. Come on. Really? I, you had forgotten about that? Yeah. I, I can't even remember how old You hit so many home runs. No, you forget oh, about it. Yeah, I got it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Barraza is 0 for 1 with a pop-up. Via, Via is on board for the second time today. That's in there for a strike, and it's 1 and 1. In all seriousness, that must be a big thrill to, you know, watch college softball on TV, how much it's grown, and then you're in this building and you hit a home run, your first ever home run in, th in this park. I think th the same feeling a lot of these players get when they step onto this field, yep. too, on such a big stage. And we talk about this Big 12 tournament, of course, everything in the postseason leading up to the Women's College World Series, which is going to be here at USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium. Packed house. The energy that's here in the World Series is just incredible. Chance for two, the flip to second for one on the first. A 4-6-3 double play turn by Texas, the 17th double play that they've turned this season. Two and a half in the books at the house that Shipman built. It's 2-2. Two -two. About four NCAA tournament locks, three teams that you would think need to run the table and win, certainly in Kansas and Iowa State and Texas Tech. But then there's the question, and this question fits for Texas. Do we have three super regional hosts potentially in this tournament? Texas is a team that, with a couple of wins here in this tournament, maybe that would be the case. Maybe they don't win to win here in this tournament. That's what Sunday is for when we figure out who are the 16 regional hosts are and who those top eight are. Here's where they stand right now in the RPI 6 through 12.
Now, it's going to be really interesting to see where the committee, the selection committee, decides to put everybody come Sunday because there's so many teams that maybe have a high RPI ranking but maybe aren't ranked quite as high like an LSU right there at the six in the RPI ended up losing to Ole Miss to open up the SEC tournament yesterday after a couple of rain delays down there in Fayetteville. But last season for Texas, just such an impressive run that that team was able to go on. Ended up handing Oklahoma their first loss in the season in game three of their Big 12 series. Went on to go to the Seattle Regional, beat Washington at home, went to Fayetteville, beat Arkansas at home after losing game one, came back and won game two and game three, then worked their way into the championship series against Oklahoma. So what you're saying is you don't need to be a regional host to have success, but it sure is nice, and it's a nice reward for what you've done through the season. Selection show is coming up on Sunday, regionals next week, then the Supers, and then everyone come on back here June 1st for the final eight teams left standing for the Women's College World Series. I do think it's important, too, for your team and, of course, for the seeding, but really how your team's feeling to start playing their best ball here towards the end of the season. I think that's a great opportunity for these teams in the Big 12 tournament, the conference tournaments that are going across, going on across the country, is to show the selection committee that you are playing some of your best softball of the year right here in May going into June. Fouled off by Martinez, who's 0 for 1 after flying out in foul ground in the first. It's a leadoff walk for Martinez. And it's interesting when we talked to Mike White this week about this Texas team, he said he had sent a message to this year's team saying, remember this time last year, didn't finish off the season the way they wanted to, certainly here in this tournament. And then all of a sudden, they flipped the switch at the right time, went on that run that you just talked about in Seattle and Fayetteville to make it here to Oklahoma City in the Women's College World Series and make it all the way to the Champ Series. I think we joked with him, if any team across the country knows how to bounce back, it's the Texas Longhorns yes. after what we saw them do last season, not to mention them going 0-5 in the... Sun continues to try to peek out here in Oklahoma City. This one is in foul ground, and it's 1-1. Texas did have that week weekend off in between Oklahoma State and Baylor, too. And we always talk about these coaches trying to find the right balance between enough rest and then maybe too much rest. Coach Mike White thought that might have contributed to them getting off to a slow start in that Baylor series, like we mentioned, getting swept. But hoping to pick up some of that momentum here in the Big 12 tournament heading into the rest of the postseason. That uh, misses for a ball. It's 2-1. and one. Now for Texas Tech, their bye came last week. They wrapped up the regular season, and you ask Craig Snyder what they did. He's like, I, go home, go relax, go do something else other than the softball, come back ready and refresh. Popped up on the infield, foul ground. Love's got it, one away. Now Coach Snyder talked to us about that balance too, but he thought that his team was at a point where they really needed the rest heading into the Big 12 tournament. Thought it was going to be really good for this team to just kind of step away, take a couple of days to rest the body, rest the mind, and then get back after it this week. If you play in a conference that has Texas and Baylor and Oklahoma State and, oh, by the way, the two-time defending national champions, I think a little break is in order. <laughs> <laughs> It's a gauntlet, that's for sure, in the Big 12. Feels like a super regional every single weekend. And you're even seeing a lot of these teams boost up their schedules in pre-conference play as well, trying to drive up that RPI, try to drive up that strength of schedule to help you when it comes time selection Sunday. Here's Kiroga. Ball one from Reigns. Sage Hoover started through the first inning. Maddie Keel came on to start the second inning, got two outs. Reigns came on in relief. 2-0. Oh. Kiroga had the big hit in that second inning. 
RBI double. And a pretty regular sight right now. Activity in the Texas Tech bullpen. Off speed, Caroga way out in front, two and one. See a lot of swings and misses at that changeup way out in front. And what that tells me is that Olivia Reigns does a nice job of hiding that pitch coming out of her hand. Spin looking very similar to the fastball that she's going to throw. So by the time these hitters pick up, that's an off-speed pitch. It's too late in their swing. Little giddy up on that pitch. It's two and two. Reigns gets the strikeout two away. And when you're able to throw the off-speed pitch consistently for strikes, these batters have to think about it, especially when they get into a two-strike count. You have to try to be on time for both speeds, which of course is easier said than done. And Reigns pumps in the fastball there to get Kiroga swinging. Here's Maloney. Maloney with the slap too short. The throw on to first in time by Oric. The pick at first by Bailey to retire the side. We've played top of the fourth here in Oklahoma City. Blythe, Wyckoff, and Kreitz for Texas Tech against the Longhorns, the number two seed in this tournament. They went 11 and seven in the Big 12. Texas Tech five and 13 tied for sixth in the Big 12. And here is Blythe who had a two run double in the first against Mac Morgan. Strike one for Morgan. Morgan gave up the two doubles in the first inning in the two runs, gave up a single in the second, another single in the third. That runner was erased by a double play turned by the Texas defense. Owen two to Peyton Blythe. Morgan's team high 32nd appearance this season. That misses for a ball. Morgan from Creighton, Missouri, after transferring over from Arizona State in her first year with Texas. 18 wins last year, pitching in the Pac-12. That would held it to show it, didn't get the call. And it's two and two. The 2-2 two -two pitch from Morgan. Count runs full. One adjustment I think we've seen Mac Morgan make as this game has gone on is her misses are down in the zone. She's not trying to bring it up at the waist, really trying to nibble right at the low part of the strike zone, right at the knees, knowing that Texas Tech was jumping all over those pitches left a bit higher. This one is a solid single to center field. Off the bat of Peyton Blythe, who's two for two. Tight ball game, top of the fourth tight ball game for Sophia Simpson. And facing the Big 12 freshman of the year, Kaylee Wyckoff. Strike one. Wyckoff lined out to third in the first. Twenty-third appearance for Simpson, who was Big 12 All Freshman a season ago, through 86 innings last year, and the count 0 and 2. Yeah, yeah, boy. 
Great performance by Wyckoff this season. That's outside for a ball. I thought it was really great talking to Coach Snyder. Terrible about, fall. You're going to tell, yeah, I gonna am talk gonna about tell the terrible, terrible fall, fall story. story. Yes, I, I think it's so great because <laughs> when we were talking to like, just about what makes Wyckoff so successful this year, and he said, you know what, I think a lot of it has to do with how she did not have a good fall. She learned how to fail forward, learned how to adjust to that failure without the pressures of the season. Popped up foul ground and just running out of room is Scott. Everybody clap your hands. Clap. It's really hard when you get into the grind of your freshman season when all of a sudden they're scouting reports on you to try to adjust when the pressure is on. But because she was having to go through those things in the fall, she learned how to make those adjustments, how to bring herself back from maybe not having as good of hitting performances. And now she's been able to carry that over into her freshman season. And we've seen the numbers that she's been able to put up all year long. Off speed a little bit. Simpson gets the strikeout. Looked like Wyckoff was ahead of it. One away. Yeah, that's the deceptive change in speeds that you're going to see from Sis Simpson. Look at the spin on this. Coming out of her hand, it looks like a rise ball or a screwball, but she's taking just enough off of it to get you swinging out in front on that pitch and her first strikeout that she's going to record in this Big 12 tournament. Here's Kennedy Kreitz, who's 0 for 1. Strike one. Kreitz popped out the second in the second. Two in the first for Texas Tech. Texas answered with two in the second. Out in front, 0-2. You can see how that's just another variation of an off-speed pitch coming out of the hand of Simpson. That one, 56 miles per hour, has a lot more down bite to it than the one we saw to strike out Kaylee Wyckoff. Simpson communicating with the dugout. Ready with the 0-2 to Kreitz. Gets away from the catcher, rolls back towards the circle, and taking second is Blythe with one down. Bit of an odd play there. It looked like it completely missed Reese Atwood's glove back behind the plate and hit straight shin guard. Well, we talked about you know Simpson was communicating with the dugout like they were trying to get on the same page, and perhaps the battery wasn't on the same page on that pitch. Wild pitch. That one holds it again, doesn't get the call. It's two and two. She's working for those low spots, those pitches low in the zone. She's trying to bring them up to get them called for strikes. Just getting a piece and staying alive. Well, the interesting thing, and you can talk from an All-American hitter's perspective, you can change speeds if you're a pitcher. It's just that it all has to look the same with the delivery and coming out of your hands. That's the deception. That's the most important part of an off-speed pitch. Absolutely. You have to have the same rhythm, the same wind-up, the same stride. Everything has to look exactly the same. This is a line shot up the middle. They're going to hold the runner at third. Good call, although it gets away from the catcher just for the moment, backed up by Simpson. Runners on the corners. Kreitz with a solid single with one out here in the fourth. And all it takes is getting on time for one pitch, and that's exactly what Kennedy Kreitz does. It looks like this pitch was supposed to be more outside, but it works its way more on the inside part of the plate. Kreitz smokes it out to Bella Dayton in center field, who makes a good throw. It just gets past Reese Atwood. But luckily for Texas, nobody scores on that throw that went to the backstop. Yeah, just hit too hard. Snyder played the conservative route and held the runner at third base. Number 36, Gabby Rawls. 
Pitch runner for Texas Tech, Gabby Rawls, will run for Kreitz. Blythe at third, 2-2 game with one out here in the fourth. Ball one. Abby Oracle for one, struck out facing Morgan in the second. The 1 0. Pulling the string again, it's 1 1. Oric, now the shortstop, was the starting third baseman, took over at shortstop at the end of March in the Iowa State Series. Riley Love is the third baseman, was at shortstop, so they had a left side of the infield flip. That's blocked by the catcher. Taking second base on the pitch in the dirt is Rawls. Two in scoring position for Oric. Simpson goes with another changeup, and you'll see her intentionally bury some changeups down into the dirt to get some swings and misses, and that one just skips away enough to allow Rawls to advance over into scoring position. Two one pitch to Oric. Two and two. Now you mentioned that switch. I think Riley Love was a trained third baseman that was playing short and now back at third. And the same thing that you were talking about for Abby Oric, trained shortstop was playing third, but now back at shortstop. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of movement on the left side of the infield for Texas Tech. Out in front of the plate, the glove home and in time. Well done by Simpson with the flip to Atwood to get Blythe at the plate. Pretty big leap to say she didn't tag her. You know, just there's, it's just hard to see there for sure whether or not she missed the tag at all. Let's get the official word. Calls up help. I think you're right, Eric. I think a lot of it has to do with the initial call made on the field by the umpires. Because then once you go to video review, you have to find indisputable video evidence to then change the call that was made on the field. But either way, I thought Reese Atwood did a fantastic job of positioning herself to where she was not going to get called for obstruction. Because to your point, we have seen that yeah. several times this year. Just great play all around, though. Simpson playing her position, flipping it. Atwood jumping out to get in position to take obstruction out of the conversation in such a quick play. And Blythe, as you mentioned, going in head first, reaching for the one part of the base the plate where maybe she'd be safe so everyone did what they could on that play in the end it was texas with the advantage and getting the out two down runners on first and third here for riley love so it scored a fielder's choice for Oric and blythe retired at the plate one two Love trying to catch Texas with the bunt. The number nine hitter single down the first baseline back in the second. That 0 2 count, got a drop ball outside and hit it straight down that first baseline. The 1 1 pitch from Sophia Simpson. That one scoots up, and Atwood has to block it. It's two and one. Heading down to second is Oric. Now 
Now Mike White is going to come out to the circle and have a conversation with Simpson. I think this conversation has everything to do with making sure you're attacking the strike zone to the nine spot because the last thing you want to do is bring up hitters like Mackenzie Herzog and Ellie Bailey with runners in scoring position. That was a quick conversation. Fairly one-sided with a couple of nods from the player, as you would expect. Activity down in the Texas bullpen, double barrel action. With Czech and Gutierrez working. Simpson trying to work her way out of the jam. Second and third with two down. Grounded just foul. It's two and two. Craig Snyder's team 31 and 21 on the season. Their RPI 63 coming into the tournament, so they've got to do a little work here. If they want to make it to the regionals next week. Another one chop foul. He's led a pretty good turnaround in his first year at Texas Tech. This team went 22 and 27 a season ago. Highlights this year including included a win against Baylor. Knocking off Texas State. Very good team twice. Maryland. That one in the dirt again. Another block by Outwood. Do you think Dwayne The Rock goes down as a tournament resume? I 100% think yeah. that's the case. Yeah. I, so. I mean when you're talking about the eye there test. He is. There he is. That's why it's so fun getting to talk to these coaches, getting to know the teams on a whole different level. 3-2 pitch to Riley Love. Foul back. Another good job by Love, who, as Maddie mentioned, found a way to get that single in the second. Now making Simpson work for it here in the fourth. Morgan started this inning, gave up a single to Blythe. Simpson got a strikeout, gave up a single, got the force out at the plate. And now ready with another 3 2 to Love. Good job by Love to spoil a good pitch. Every once in a while, you can hear the Texas Tech dugout yelling something on some of the off-speed pitches that Sophia Simpson's bringing out there. Now you still have to be able to hit them up in the box. But what you were talking about, about the consistency in the windup for those off-speed pitches to make them effective, I wonder if there's something that they're seeing or they're picking up because you can hear them yelling out something from the dugout on some of those change-ups. This one is hit well to left field, way back, and out of here. We know that Texas Tech can hit the long ball. They've done it all season long. And how about the timing by Riley Love for her first home run of the season in the Big 12 tournament tie ball game going up against Texas. 3-2 count, two outs, and she drills this thing for a three-run shot to give Texas Tech the lead in the top of the fourth inning. A couple things in play here. One, Dwayne getting his job done, his or her, but we're going with his. To Love, as you mentioned, first home run this season. It came on a nine pitch at bat, and that is the fourth home run of her three year Texas Tech career. 
Back to the top of the order, Herzog strike one. And I must say, it wasn't a home run that just kind of went 201 feet down the left field line. She put a charge into it. No doubter after seeing a lot of off-speed pitches. It just, you got the feeling that she was anticipating Simpson coming in there with her higher velocity pitches, and she was on time on that full count swing. 74th home run for Texas Tech this season, and it's a big one. A two-out home run, putting them on top, 5-2 here in the fourth. Simpson bounces back and gets Herzog to strike. They swing that through the Big 12 office. That's impressive. 5-2 <laughs> game. 9-1-2 for the Longhorns. And you asked the question about the pitching changes. We have the fourth pitcher of the afternoon for Texas Tech. It's Kendall Fritz. Bringing in the senior here just to be a different look. She's going to throw that curveball to both sides of the plate. Likes to work up in the zone. But another pitcher that has that off-speed pitch. Somebody that's not going to blow you away with velocity. They sit up the middle off the bat of Papelka. Yeah, 63 miles per hour. So it's just a matter of these batters being able to get on time for the change in looks yet again that they're seeing from Texas Tech in this ballgame. So Papelka is aboard to start things off against Fritz. Her last start was... April 29th, remember, bye week last week for Texas Tech. Went three innings, gave up six hits, five earned runs against Oklahoma State. Walking a couple of strikeouts. That's in there for a strike from Fritz. Senior from Frisco, Texas, making her 32nd appearance on the season. Top of the order, Leanne Good takes the ball. It's 1-1. Good's 0 for 2, popped out in the first, reached out an error in the second. Hard shot, fair ball down the line. Hit so hard that holding it second is Papelka. So two solid singles to get things going for Texas here against Fritz. I would love to know the exit velocity of some of these hits off the bat because they just sound different. One of them being this base hit off the bat of Leanne Good straight down that third baseline. And you're right, she hit it almost too hard to where you couldn't advance any extra bases. But Papelka had no chance of getting to third base on that base hit out to left. Another hard hit ball, but this is going to hang in the air for Via in center field. Papelka. Didn't have a chance to get back to tag up in time. It was hit so hard as Scott is retired one away. Lasers all over the field. This is where having faced Texas Tech earlier in the season works to your advantage when they do make all of these pitching changes because you have at bats to look back on. You know what sort of speeds a pitcher is going to throw out there. And so far in the bottom of the fourth, it seems like Texas has their timing spot on. Longhorns now 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. Here's Bella Dayton, who's walked twice. Dayton lays down a bunt and rolls foul. Four hits now for the Longhorns, seven hits for Texas Tech. This is a fly ball out to right field. Wyckoff giving way to Villa. The center fielder has it in right center field. Two down. Some hard hit balls, but a couple of quick outs for Fritz in the circle. Attacks the strike zone, forcing Texas to swing early in the count. They've been on time for a couple. But Bella Dayton just barely underneath that ball. Fly ball out to center field for out number two. Here's Reese Atwood, 0 for 2. Fly out and a ground out. Take strike one.
Misses for a ball. It's one and two to Atwood. Cleanup hitter for Texas here today. Did you not get it? No, I didn't. Oh. Oh, yeah. Swung on and missed. Fritz, after a slow start, figured things out there in the fifth inning. Between Texas and Oklahoma, over 9,000 fans in the stands Regular for that game. season record. Simpson misses, ball one. Two and out. Close spot there, 63 miles per hour outside of the zone. Maybe thinking it's a bit high. Don't think Reese Atwood liked that one called the ball. Bailey takes down low. It's three and out. Herzog, Via, Kreitz, Oric, Love. The run scores for Texas Tech, who are on top 5-2 here in the fifth. 3-0 to Bailey. And it's a four-pitch walk to get things going here. It is here in this stadium. World Series All-Tournament last year. Shut out Oklahoma State in the semis. Steps into the circle here with a runner on and nobody out in the fifth. And throws strike one to Ariana Villa. Then on base twice, walked and scored in the first, singled in the third. That's out of play. And it's 0-2. Pinch runner at first, Hamlin running for Bailey. As you take a look at the numbers for Bia, the junior center fielder. Check ahead in the count, 0 and 2. In the dirt, swung on and missed, strikeout, one away. It's a really nice job of throwing that off speed down into the dirt after getting ahead 0-2 with the curveballs down and away. Gets the big swing and miss to start off her appearance in this ball game with a strikeout. Check made one appearance in the Baylor series. That was in game one when an inning in two thirds gave up five hits, four runs. Since the end of March, this is just her sixth appearance. She made six total appearances in Big 12 play this season, throwing 17 innings. So a proven postseason performer. The hope is she's ready and rested for the 2023 postseason. 101 to Barraza. Oh for two, popped out to short in the first, grounded into a double play in the third. One and two. We'll do the one-two again. 
You'll see Czech do a nice job of mixing both inside and outside, both to lefties and to righties. Got a nice break on the curveball, too. Every once in a while, she'll get some downbite on that pitch, making it even more difficult to get solid barrel on. Call strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Czech, two down. And if she can locate that spot down and away to the righties, that is going to be a tough pitch to hit. Look at this late break on the pitch. It starts off looking like it's going to end up in that left-handed batter's box, and that tight spin and rotation on that pitch just barely brings it into the low outside part of the strike zone for strike three. Peyton Blythe fouls it off for strike one. She's two for two, doubled in two runs in the first, singled in the fourth. Peyton third on the team in hitting this season, 357 in the regular season. A double in the first inning, came with two down to get Texas Tech in front. Another strike, Check just pounding the zone right now. It's 0-2. Skips one up there, there goes the runner and sliding in safely is Hamlin. Another change up down in the dirt, just barely scoots past the glove of Reese Atwood. Ends up right underneath her, but that gives Hamlin enough time to slide into second base safely. You can see she's trying to turn her body to get in front of it. She ends up blocking it, preventing it from going behind her, but because it almost gets stuck underneath her, that's what allows the runner to move into scoring position. This one slapped out to left center field. It'll get down and all the way to the fence. Texas Tech tacks on another run. It's another double for Peyton Blythe. She's three for three with three runs batted in. 6-2 Raiders. Another great piece of hitting by Peyton Blythe in this ball game. After the changeup misses for a ball down in the dirt, you could tell she was expecting a curveball outside, and that's exactly what she got, keeping her hands long through the zone, driving it out into the gap. And just how important it was for Hamlin to move over into scoring position on that changeup down in the dirt, because that's what allowed her to score on that double out to the right center gap. The senior gets it done on a 1-2 pitch. Check had struck out via and Barraza was ahead in the count, 0-2 on Blythe, who came through with their third hit in as many at-bats, and Texas Tech up by four in the fifth. Something you talked about in your conversation with Craig Snyder was the importance of doubles, how doubles reflects on how good a team is at the plate. They've piled up the doubles this year. And Coach Snyder said the sign of a good hitting team is their ability to hit doubles, especially doubles into the opposite field that we just saw from Blythe. He said when you're hitting those doubles, that means that you're timing it up, you're hitting the ball opposite field, tunneling well, and using your lower body to get power onto those doubles. He did say every once in a while you can cheat your way into a home run, miss hit a ball, and it gets up into the wind, probably especially at Texas Tech's home stadium <laughs> with that wind blowing out there but he said he loves to see his team hitting those doubles into the gap. Wyckoff's 0 for 2, lined out and struck out. This one is hit well to right center field, but moving over, covering a lot of ground is Dayton to get there to retire the side. Texas Tech adds another run. I, I guarantee she's watching, probably back at home. Her daughter, just a few weeks old, JC. Oh, congratulations. Hit her fill of softball. Awesome. Home half of the fifth inning for Cats Alma Mater. Down by four, Texas Tech putting up the runs. Picking up the hits. Six runs on eight hits so far for Texas Tech, number seven seed.
Martinez, Simmons, Quiroga scheduled to face Kendall Fritz here in the fifth. Martinez 0 for 1 with a walk. Hoover got the start through the first inning. Maddie Keel came in, got two outs in the second inning before Olivia Reigns came on. And Kendall Fritz in her second inning of work here for Texas Tech. I know you and I have our heads on a swivel trying to see which pitcher is coming out of that dugout <laughs> for Texas Tech at the start of these innings. In on the hands, and the catcher calls for it. That's Kreitz who has it, one away. Olivia Reigns, third pitcher used. She's in keep it loose mode in the dugout right now. Although with the way Craig Snyder's work things, keep that arm loose mode should be part of it as well. Very true. <laughs> yeah, we see you. Yeah, yeah, we, we got, got you. Oh, yeah, we got you dancing. <laughs> Simmons is 0 for 1, walked and scored in the second. Fouled out in the third. This one is back up the middle, solid single for Katie Simmons with one down here in the fifth. Texas has been putting some good swings on Kendall Fritz in the circle. Those back-to-back -back base hits to start off the fourth inning but weren't able to capitalize on them. After a couple of quick outs, a strikeout to end the fourth. And now Katie Simmons with the base hit with one away. Kiroga doubled in a run in the second, struck out in the third. Take strike one. As we mentioned, this is a rematch from the Big 12 tournament last year. Game one by Texas. Then Texas lost to Oklahoma State before going on their NCAA tournament run in Seattle and Fayetteville. Off the glove of the pitcher, she'll get the out at first. Two down. Quick reaction by Fritz in the circle. Another hard hit ball off these Texas Longhorn bats. Kiroga gets all of this one straight back up the middle and it hits the glove of Fritz. She's able to knock it down and get that out over at first. Two down for Maloney. Take strike one. Maloney missed last season because of a knee injury. And this season she has started all but three games. Outstanding freshman year as a result, all freshman team and also second team Big 12. One on one. We asked Mike White about Maloney, and I think the realistic thought for the Texas program is maybe she would platoon this year, that perhaps coming back from a knee injury, she would need that first year to get up the speed. But she was in the fast lane from the start. This one's going to hang up in the air for Blythe to retire the side. So a couple of hard hit balls, but it doesn't hurt Texas Tech. We've played five. It's a 6-2 lead for the Red Raiders. Red Raiders trying to keep the good times rolling. There you see two of the pitchers they've used here today. So when you're out of the game, then it's just time to relax, have a little fun. Blooper, foul ground, long run. And getting there is Papelka. One pitch, one away as Kreitz is retired. Never seems to be a dull moment over in the Texas Tech dugout, does it, between Dwayne the Rock, the stick that we do not have the name of yet. <laughs> well, you, the dancing. We, we have a research pro project if Texas Tech is able to hold on here today. Dwayne's holding on over there too. Strike one to Abby Oreck, who's 0 for 2 with a run scored. Well, we asked Craig Snyder this week, you see Texas is your draw. This is a team they hung with. They were a couple outs away from winning the series in regular season, and Texas had just dropped three in a row to Baylor, so 
you're Texas Tech and you see that, do you feel good about the draw, even though Texas is the number two seed in the tournament, they're a top ten team in the country, and they played in the Women's College World Series last year? The one thing that I think these teams really can all use to their advantage is that familiarity piece of it, having faced them already in the regular season. And one thing for both of these teams was it was so far back at the beginning of conference play. I think you could be a completely different team this time of the year than you were back in March. I think that's one thing that Texas Tech is kind of using to their advantage. And they said that against Texas today, they needed to do a good job of eliminating the free passes and playing clean defense and coming through and executing the offensive plans. And I think we've seen their offense be able to step up. They did make an error earlier on in the game that cost them. This one, a fly ball to right field off the bat of Oric into the glove of Maloney, two down. Well, they've had the big hits as well in this game. None bigger than off the bat of Riley Love in the fourth inning in a 2-2 game with two aboard. First home run of the season could not have come at a better time. 3-2 count after fouling off a couple of pitches. Gets one that she can get a hold of, and she got every bit of that pitch on that swing, driving it well over that left field wall. It was the ninth pitch of the at-bat as Love takes ball one. All six runs today for Texas Tech have scored with two outs. The timely hitting piece for Texas Tech too. They've been able to hit the ball hard, but it's coming through with that clutch situational hitting, something that doesn't necessarily show up on a stat sheet, but you've got to be able to come through with those two out hits if you want to be successful into the postseason. Number nine hitter Love is two for two, singled in the second before that three run home run in the fourth. Two and one. Count evens up at two and two to Love. Oklahoma State's playing in the next game against Kansas. This one is sent out to center field. Long run and making the grab in center field is Dayton. Tremendous catch by the Texas center fielder to retire the side. Demi Elder, the new right fielder for Texas Tech. 9-1-2 and two for Texas. Papelka, good, and Scott to face Fritz. Strike one. Papelka's one for two, scored after reaching on a fielder's choice in the second, singled in the fourth. Bunted hard, making the play, and in time, Love onto Barraza, covering it first, one away. Not an easy play for Riley Love to make over at third base. It actually comes off of Papelka's bat pretty hard. She has to reach to her backhand and then come across her body and throw it to Alana Barraza over at first base. Good play for Riley Love to start off this inning. Well, you just talked about the keys for Texas Tech. No free passes, but also playing clean in the field, making plus plays like that one to get things going here in the sixth inning. Especially with as hard as Texas has been putting the ball in play the past couple of innings, you really need your defense to step up behind you and make some of those extraordinary plays. Top of the order, here's Leanne Good, who's one for three. Good popped out in the first, reached on an air in the second, singled in the fourth. 0 oh 2.
This one's hit well to right center field, making the run and not getting there is Villa. Good around first. She slides into second safely with a one out double. Another hard hit ball by Leanne Good. This one finds the gap just beyond Via in center field. Got a bit of a toe tap with her stride to try to get her timing down. She drills this one almost out to the wall. A good grab by Via, bringing that throw in there. 16th double for Good on the season with one away in the bottom of the sixth. Her second hit of the game, and here is Mia Scott. Scott hit it hard her last time, but at Via the center fielder. Reached on a bunt single in the first, walked in the second. Leading hitter for Texas this season, trying to keep the line moving, facing Fritz. 2-0. and oh. Texas Tech has eight pitchers on their staff. Four pitchers have thrown, or appeared rather, in at least 20 games this season. Fritz, the fourth pitcher used for Texas Tech. That's in there for a strike. You wonder if it's Fritz's game the rest of the way or if there's another change just in case for Texas Tech. Two and one. Fly ball to center field. Via drifts back. She's got it. Tagging is good. Here comes the throw, and she slides in safely at third with two down. Another hard hit ball that just goes right to somebody. Off speed pitch, 50 miles per hour down in the zone. Yeah, Scott goes down and gets it. Smart by Lee and good to tag on that one and move over to third base on that deep fly out to center. Texas looking for their first hit with runners in scoring position today. Bella Dayton takes strike one. She's walked twice and flied out. This one is hit hard down the right field line. It is fair and it is gone. Two run home run, Bella Dayton, her second of the season. And the Longhorns aren't done yet. Bella Dayton taking notes of her teammates' previous at bat, seeing that Kendall Fritz likes to establish the inside part of the zone to the left handed batters. Realizes that and decides to attack that curveball inside, and she gets her barrel out in front of her. Drills this pitch over the right field wall. That ball got out of here in a hurry. Line drive home run over that right field fence. Another two runs come across for the Longhorns. Here's Reese Atwood with two down. Ball one. 40th home run given up by Texas Tech pitching this season, second most in the Big 12. Now a two run game. One on one. Atwood's 0 for 3. Fly out, ground out, strike out. Finally, after going 0 for 11, Texas comes through with a hit with runners in scoring position. And it's a big fly off the bat of Dayton. Two and one. More two out runs that have been scored in this yes. ball game too, this time just <laughs> from Texas.
That's out of play. I had no idea we had a foul ball count until just now. <laughs> and Let me I guess, love it's it. a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> and I love it. This isn't a foul ball. That's going to get down for a base hit. 53 foul balls today. Who on payroll? Or, I mean, that's – I didn't know that was one of our positions here on this crew, and I, I'm, I'm here for it. Well, I know there's at least four of them because they're still <laughs> stuck on this netting up here. Atwood's got her first hit of the afternoon. Comes with two down here in the sixth. Good swing on an off-speed pitch by Atwood. Two-strike count, two out at bat. Able to extend this inning with that base hit out to left. That gets the tying run to the plate here in the sixth inning. Martinez 0 for 2 with a walk. One and oh. There's the strike. It's one and one. One and two to Martinez. Out in front of the plate, the pitcher makes the throw on the first to retire the side. But Bella Dayton comes through with a two-run home run. How about this shot for her second home run on the season? Bella Dayton having to battle through injury. To the seventh inning. Texas Tech has not trailed here today. They are still in front trying to hold on and maybe add a little insurance here as check throws ball one to start the seventh inning. Herzog leading off top of the order here for Texas Tech. She's one for three, doubled and scored in the first. First at bat for Mackenzie Herzog off of the still check. Last at bat, strikeout off of Sophia Simpson. Fly ball to left. Papelka, one away. Check came on with a runner on board in the fifth in relief of Simpson. Struck out Villa, struck out Barraza. Was ahead in the count on Blythe. But gave up an RBI double for some insurance. And it looks like that's going to be it for Check because Texas is going to follow. Imagine that they are ready to get on the dirt, start playing. Another pitching change in this ball game, and Texas is going to bring in the freshman Sitlali Gutierrez, who's had a standout year in her freshman campaign for the Longhorns. Somebody who throws a little bit of everything, that rise ball, drop ball combination. So she's going to mix eye levels with those pitches, but she's also going to mix speeds as well. Throws about three different speeds. A couple of off-speed pitches in there, too, that are moving in two different directions. Speaking of patiently waiting to get on the field, there's Kansas <laughs> getting ready. Well, you do whatever you can to get an eye on the field here, so you're going to go up on that little. <laughs> that looks like a good spot out yeah, there, right? Just a little rise out there in right center field and cram in as many as you can. Freshman Sitlali Gutierrez out of Stanford, Texas. Throws ball one, number another member of the all-freshman team of the Big 12, one of five for Texas. Bailey's 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. 
2 and 0. Oh. There's a strike, it's two and one. Trying to locate that drop ball down in the zone. Three in a row that we've seen for the first three pitches from Gutierrez. <laughs> Fouled back and it's two and two. <laughs> oh, another one for the collection. <laughs> I'll be barrel rolling between games to claim those, Madison. <laughs> the 2-2. Inside corner, strike three. Bailey's retired, two down. Great location for the drop ball inside. It got Ellie Bailey thinking that she was going to continue to go away with this pitch and rides it down underneath the hands, dropping down and inside to Ellie Bailey to get her looking. Here's Via. Grounded to third, Scott to first to retire the side. Last chance for the Longhorns here in Oklahoma City, down two. Game one on March 24th, Tech led 2-1 in the seventh. Mia Scott had the walk-off double to end it and give Texas a 3-2 win. Game two of the series, Texas Tech was up late. Reese Atwood had a two-run home run to give Texas a win. Part of a sweep for Texas over Texas Tech. Can Texas Tech hang on here up by two in the seventh? Simmons down in the count, 0 and 2. Hoover on in relief of Fritz, who went three, gave up six hits, two runs, didn't walk anyone. I think those free passes are going to be the key for Sage Hoover coming back into this ball game. You've got to make Texas earn their base runners via a base hit. You do not want to give them a walk, a hit by pitch, in order to get them to get any momentum here in the bottom of the seventh. Here's the interesting way it has worked out here for Snyder. Simmons leading off. Simmons did not face Hoover in the first inning. And on the hands, popped up foul ground and out of play. Hoover faced the first five in the lineup. Simmons bat sixth. Love it when a plan comes together, right? <laughs> Swung on, hit well to left field, way back, and it is gone. A leadoff home run. Simmons, it's a one-run game. It's a great swing on an 0-2 pitch. After falling behind in the count, Simmons sticks with this one, times it up. Looks like it was supposed to be a rise ball even further up and inside. This one stays right about letter high. And she gets her barrel out in front, driving it for a solo shot. And now the Longhorns are within one run of tying up this ball game. Sixth home run of the season for the sophomore. Her second hit of the afternoon. And here is Kiroga. Strike one. Kiroga one for three with a double and an RBI. Roga with a couple of home runs on the season. I think she was looking to tie up this ball game with that first swing in this at bat. One on one. Oh. 
One and two. Texas Tech scored two in the first. Texas came back to tie it with two in the second. And three in the fourth for the Red Raiders, one in the fifth. This one's hit well to left field. Going back, way back, and gone! Just like that, we have a tie ball game in the bottom of the seventh inning. Back-to-back -back solo shots from the Texas Longhorns. We've seen it throughout the season. They know how to battle back. They know how to perform under pressure. And how about Kiroga with this two-strike swing after a non-competitive pitch that missed way out of the zone. She knew that Hoover was going to come back into the strike zone with something, and she gets all of this pitch, driving it opposite field and tying up this game. Third home run of the season for the sophomore. Back-to-back -back home runs for Texas to tie it at six in the seventh. Maloney takes strike one. Both of those home runs, two strike counts. For the record, Maloney and Papelka, the next two do up. Maloney's in the box now. Papelka scheduled to bat next. They have not homered this year. And during the celebration and right after the celebration, I saw Mike White down in the third base coach's box just kind of like giving the pump the brakes, just we need you on base kind of signal here. And she'll get on base the winning run is at first with nobody out for Texas here in the seventh. All you need is one run. So the key is is getting that runner over into scoring position as she squares to bunt, watching that one go by for strike one. Do whatever you can to get Maloney over to second base. Three home runs for Texas since two outs in the sixth. That's in there for a strike, it's 0-2. In the sixth inning, Papelka grounded out. Good followed with a double. Scott fly to center, but then Dayton hit the home run with two outs. And then Simmons here leading off the seventh, followed by Kiroga, both homering for the Longhorns. That's chopped, tough play here. They'll get the runner over, out at first. We'll see if there's a challenge here. Very close at first base. And Coach Mike White's going to want to take a look at this play over at first. Very close. Papelka does a nice job of just putting this into fair territory. Hoover has to reach up and grab it and then throw across to first base. Does look like she had her out from very, that field. Very, very close. Texas, no stranger to bottom of the seventh inning video review either. We saw several of those in their series against Baylor. Not on the base yet. Just as the ball gets into the glove and the glove closes down on the softball, which is what they're looking for. Right about there. Yeah, it's not just as it enters the outer part of the webbing. You got to have the ball make contact with the hand and in the webbing and let it start to close is what we've been told they're looking for. And I think that's enough there to make it look like to us at least that the right call was made on the field, but it is being reviewed at the moment. 
the bottom line is Maloney is at second base with one out. And she's the winning run. And the top of the order coming up for Texas, too. Call is upheld, so. Maloney's retired 1-3. And it will be, as Madison said, the top of the order, Lee Ann Good, who doubled her last time up. Winning run at second with Maloney as Papelka's retired, and here is Good. Scott and Dayton do up after good. A couple of left-hand hitters for Texas as good stands in, trying to end it right here. The 0-1. 0-2. One and two. The Longhorns were down six to two with two outs in the sixth inning. Some more late game magic for Mike White's team. That misses, it's two and two. It's that pitch, that one and two pitch that misses way out of the zone. I think with that ball, all of a sudden, Leanne Good has the momentum in this at bat after falling behind 0 2. Now, all three hits in this inning have come on two strike counts. Two two. Popped up on the right side of the infield. Second baseman Barraza calls for it. Big out there, two down here in the seventh. Looked like Good got the pitch that she wanted to, just Third missed baseman. underneath Number it. Now it all comes down Scott. to the sophomore and Mia Scott. He's had a couple of hard hit balls that have just gone right to people today. Woo. Strike one. Scott reached in the first and a bunt single, walked in the second, lined to center in the fourth, flied out to center in the sixth. One and one. One and two, throwing back, trying to get the runner, and safe is the call at second base as Maloney just got back. Kreitz close. Quick snap throw from back behind the plate. Sees her off. Just barely makes it back in time. Looks like Kreitz is going to come out and have a conversation with Hoover out in the circle. I wonder if this is a little bit of a delay just to give Texas Tech enough time to take a look and see if there should be a review here. Perhaps not. The one, two. Slapped foul and out of play. Longhorns with five walk-off wins this season. Looking for a sixth here to get the postseason started. Scott has one of those five walk-offs. It was against Tech. Another one, two. Two and two. 
Yeah, that walk off was a double out to right center off of Olivia Reigns in that ball game. The 2-2. Two -two. That misses and the count runs full. Simmons and Kiroga back to back home runs in the seventh to tie the game. Maloney with a single. She's at second with two down. This one sent out to left field. It hangs in the air long enough for Blythe to get it to retire the side. Extra innings here in. Four, five, and six for Texas Tech against Gutierrez. Barraza leads things off. Loved by Scott at third. One pitch, one out. We've seen Texas Tech be aggressive all game long. Taking a good swing at that one is Barraza, but it just happens to go straight to Mia Scott. Makes a nice play moving to her left for round number one. Number That's eight in a row retired wow. by Texas pitching. Check and Gutierrez combining. For those eight straight, here's Blythe. Three for three today. Three runs batted in. Ball one. Doubled in two runs in the first. Singled leading off the fourth. Doubled in a run with two outs in the fifth. All six Texas Tech runs scored with two outs. Know we talked about it at the beginning of this ball game, Eric, but a lot of these batters for Texas Tech have had substantial jumps in their offensive numbers this season, and Peyton Blythe is another one of those batters. And one thing that I noticed comparing her swing from this year to last season is her lower body, how she's almost kind of eliminated what used to be a toe tap in her stride, and now it's very quiet in her lower body. Not a lot of movement, just relies on the strength in her legs and staying long through the ball. Two and one. Had four home runs last season. Nine home runs already on this season. A big jump in average too, Maddie. 245 last year, 357 in the regular season this year. Third on the team in hitting. And a three hit day here today. <laughs> Morgan got the start, followed by Simpson, then check. Now Gutierrez for Texas. Three and two. Game one wasn't close. Iowa State rolled. Eight won the final over Baylor. Set up a meeting with Oklahoma tomorrow. Texas Tech and Texas, a different story. 6-6 six, six in extras. And it's a one-out walk to Blythe here to get things going in the eighth. Good at bat by Blythe, fouling off a couple of close pitches. Able to work that walk, trying to see if they can capitalize on that free pass here in the top of the eighth. I know the lighting looks a little funky right now because there's some gray clouds around, but for the moment, as the lights start to come on here as well in Oklahoma City. I did tell you that this was some of my favorite weather to play in throughout my career because I always felt like it was warm out, but it wasn't too bright, so I could always see the ball. Didn't have to deal with a ton of shadows out on the field, too. Okay. Demi Elder's first plate appearance. Did you like playing in extra inning ball games in elimination games in the postseason? <laughs> extra inning ball games were always so much fun. I, I loved the high pressure situation. 
especially if you're the home team, too. I always love that. Elder to second, turning to second for one, no throw to first, as Blythe is retired, two down. Elder came into the game defensively for Wyckoff, so that was her first at bat. Two down for Kennedy Kreitz, who's one for three today with a run score. First pitch to the Tech catcher. Foul back for strike one. Oh, and two. Really nice off speed pitch coming in about 59 miles per hour. That's that mid range as far as the mix of speeds that you're going to see from Sitlali Gutierrez. She has one that's a bit slower than that. And then, of course, her higher velocity pitches, that rise ball drop ball, are going to come in a lot harder than that one. One and two. Gutierrez. As we mentioned, all freshman team, also second team all conference selection. Mike White says her potential is unlimited. Trying to make an impact here in her first postseason appearance for Texas. Just missed, it's two and two. Good spot. Outside, after a couple of off-speed off pitches in a row, decides to go with a 69 mile per hour drop ball on the outside part of the plate, maybe just a bit too far off. Good take by Kreitz. If anybody knows the strike zone, it's Kennedy Kreitz. <laughs> the Texas Tech catcher, 2-2. Two -two. Looked like it was in a similar location, so Kreitz wasn't going to take any chances <laughs> with that one. <laughs> D. McClarity in the on-deck circle to pinch hit for Oric. if we get there. Two down here at the top of the eighth. That's going to be a base hit to center field. Kreitz comes through with her second hit of the game. First and seconds with two down for Texas Tech and the pinch hitter coming to the plate. Seen some really good two strike hitting from both teams throughout this ball game. After watching a drop ball outside, fouling one off. The pitch after that gets one more inside and gets her barrel out in front to drive it out there for a two out single. Your attention, please. Pinch hitting for the Red Raider, number 20, D. McClarity. Big spot here for the freshman from Garland, Texas. Two eighty two on the season, eleven for thirty nine. As she steps in here with two on and two down in the eighth. Ball one. Gets away from the no, catcher no, no. and taking third safely. Perhaps holding their breath a little bit. Elder didn't get very far away from the catcher, but didn't draw a throw. So the go-ahead run, 60 feet away. Almost looks like Reese Atwood just loses that pitch as it's on its way to her. It's a drop ball. Maybe wasn't able to get her glove underneath that pitch enough, but that slight bobble allows Elder to move ahead another 60 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Two and one. Just missing that off speed low in the zone. 
McClarity does have a pretty good eye up at the plate, too. Ten walks on the season in her 49 plate appearances. It's another look at those two out RBIs that we've seen from both sides. Six from Texas Tech, two from Texas. Two and two. Texas Tech not happy with that call. It did look a bit lower than the pitch before that was called for a ball. This one lower in the strike zone. Atwood trying to bring it up. Looked like a good take there. The 2-2 pitch. Hammered foul. Freshman D. McClarity pinch hitting here in the top half of the eighth. Runners on the corners. Again, the 2 2. And the tied at six in the eighth. Grounded, cut off by the third baseman. Scott on the first for the out to retire the side. So the freshman, Gutierrez, gets it done in the circle. Texas with another chance to walk it off when we come back. Her first trip into the circle today. Herzog pitched quite a bit in her time at Texas A&M. She pitched against Oklahoma State. On April 30th, went three and a third, got the start in that game, did face Texas in that series, one appearance through two innings, gave up four hits and three runs. There's a strike, it's one and one. We had a feeling after talking to Coach Snyder that we might see Mackenzie Herzog in this tournament. He likes that she's going to come in here, throw some pretty good velocity, east west combination with that curveball, screwball. So the plate umpire just came out in front of the plate. I think an illegal pitch may have been called, and 2-0 and is the count. So Herzog gets whistled, called for an illegal pitch. So 2-0 count. Make it 3-0. and Let's go back to the prior pitch to look for the illegal. Yeah, I think it's that back leg coming off of the ground. You can see how it's leaving contact with the dirt, something that's called by the corner umpires. So instead of a strike, goes down at a ball. Now 3-0 count to Dayton. Little bloop back behind. Second, he'll get down for a base hit. So Bella Dayton is aboard for the fourth time today. A couple of walks, a single, that two-run home run in the sixth. Came down to have a conversation with Mike White, asking him if he wants the illegal pitch called or if he wants to take the result of the play. And of course, he's going to go ahead and take that base hit for Bella Dayton. But two illegal pitches called on Herzog here, who has not pitched a lot this year. This is her 25th inning of work. And here is Atwood. Chance to walk it off again. Out of play, it's one on one. That one is one for four. Singled her last time. And the sun finally comes out here in Oklahoma City, two minutes before five central time. That gets away. The runner will advance on. It's a scoring position with nobody out. Texas just trying to play a little fundamental softball, move that runner into scoring position. Reese Atwood turns to square to lay down a sack bunt. Pitch missing way low and inside, gets past Kennedy Kreitz back there behind the plate. And Bella Dayton moves over to second base.
Atwood attempted to bunt again. Bunts it foul. It's now two and two. Texas kid in the circle for Texas Tech. Trying to keep the Longhorns scoreless in the eighth and send it on to the ninth inning. Dayton at second with nobody out. 2-2 to Atwood. Hit by the pitch. First and second with nobody out. Those low and inside pitches almost looks like a screwball coming out of the hand of Mackenzie Herzog or just falling out of her hand too early. Because of that, bounces down, hits Reese Atwood on that left leg. Here is Martinez. Martinez attempts to bunt. Bunts it foul. The 0 1 pitch to Martinez. So I think they did call oh, an illegal right. pitch because it is 2-0. So that's exactly why Coach Snyder went over to third base umpire. It's that back leg for Mackenzie Herzog. Has to stay in contact with the ground throughout the entire motion. Not something that's easily adjusted when you're in the middle of a ball game either. Yes, so you saw the count change. Didn't see it from the plate umpire, any indication there. But that's what brought Snyder out to talk to the third base umpire who's got his eye on that back foot of Herzog. So the illegal pitch called. The count is now 3-0 and to Martinez. There's a strike. Martinez with the sacrifice. Winning run at third with one down. Perfectly executed sack bunt. Not easy to do when somebody's in the pitcher circle throwing 68 miles per hour. But she squares early, gets it off the end of the bat. Doesn't rush to get out of the box. Makes sure that it's down in fair territory before she takes off to first base. Really nice job by the freshman there. Garland's first pitch hits Simmons, and the bases are loaded for Texas with one out here in the bottom of the eighth. That got Simmons pretty good. She's going to take a moment to kind of walk beyond first base. Looked like straight on the top of the foot. Oh, mm. right on the toe. Down padding. Number three, Vanessa. All right, so you got two things in play here. Obviously, with the bases loaded, Carlin cannot afford a walk here. And also, Texas Tech needs to bring the infield and the outfield in to cut down the run at the plate. That one skipped up. It gets away. And Texas has the win here in Oklahoma City. Come from behind win for Texas. We've seen them do that all season long.
peace and love for me You are everything that I have ever wanted I want to spend every second of my life with you I don't know if some kind of a magical If they green with you So the joy effect that I have turned on so wide So the third effect on your smile on me in my life Baby you are and will remain mine Forever and ever Whenever I look into your eyes I find less peace and love for me You are everything that I have ever wanted I want to spend every second of my life with you I don't know if some kind of a magical If they green with you so the joy effect that I have turned on so wide So the third effect on your smile on me in my life Baby you are and will remain mine Forever and ever I don't know if some kind of a magical If they green with you So the joy effect that I have turned on so wide when it's the effect on your smile, on me, in my life Baby, you are